My name is Dr. John Mamarian, and I'm a professor of medicine at Real Cornell Medical College uh, at the Methodist Hospital, Houston Methodist Hospital in Houston, Texas. I'm also the director of uh, nuclear cardiology and cardiac CT at Methodist Hospital. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, the lecture I gave this morning on uh, calcium scoring in uh, 2018, where we stand. Uh, as many of you know, calcium scoring has been uh, really used for the last 25 to 30 years in clinical practice as a way of identifying early coronary artery disease. And in fact, it's the number one uh, technique uh, besides CT coronary angiography for identifying early, early plaque. Uh, many years ago, it was identified that by determining the extent of plaque, uh, and calcified plaque on a, on a uh, calcium score, you could predict outcome. And so it became clear that if you had a calcium score of zero, you were at extremely low risk. And in fact, the most recent uh, data from the, uh, from the MESA investigators showed that even 11 years uh, after initial scan, uh, the uh, calcium score of zero still predicts extremely low risk in a predictable fashion. We, conversely, it was also shown that in the MESA data over this 11-year period that in patients uh, who have a calcium score of over 300 and the higher it gets, the higher the risk for having events. So calcium scoring has become very important in terms of predicting who is at low risk and who is at high risk. I might also add that calcium scoring helps predict risk beyond your typical uh, clinical characteristics, such as identified by the Framingham Risk Score or the ATP3 uh, guidelines. So if someone may be at low risk by Framingham risk score, they may be still at very high risk based on their calcium score. And therefore, we generally speaking do calcium scoring on men and women, men over age 40, women over age 50, uh, irrespective of their risk factor profile in order to better identify uh, their risk for having underlying atherosclerosis and their risk for, or for having cardiac events in the future. This also becomes important when you look at uh, recent guidelines. For instance, the, uh, the American Heart Association uh, guidelines for lipid uh, management. We find in, 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 uh, in recent publications that over half of the patients who would be considered candidates for statin therapy, for instance, uh, based on the recent guidelines, have calcium scores of zero. And when you look at their events, uh, in those with calcium scores of zero who are not taking statins but would have been candidate for statin therapy, they do exceedingly well, indicating that calcium scoring can help uh, understand which patients in every given risk group, based on what the guidelines suggest, might benefit from having statin therapy or not having statin therapy. And so, uh, in general, calcium scoring has become a very robust way of, uh, of, of assessing uh, patient risk and guiding uh, potential therapeutics in terms of hopefully reducing risk uh, in, the, in the subsequent years to come.